Hi, I'm Randy McAbee, Tackle Warehouse Pro, and today we're on the Central Coast uh, fishing a little lake, and today we're going to be targeting summertime bass out on the ends of these points where it dumps off into the river channel with a 5-inch lake fl flutter spoon. Uh, in the last couple years, these things have really taken off and uh, become really popular for summertime bass that congregate on these drops, uh, river channels and stuff out there in that deep water where they're uh, feeding on bait fish. And the neat thing about this thing is you can fish it fast. It's heavy enough to throw it out there in 30, 40 foot of water and fish it. I like to fish it up these points and I can fish it fast. It's uh, something that you lift the rod tip and let it fall back to the bottom. Lift the rod tip, fall back to the bottom. It's a pretty simple concept. And these fish are going to eat it as soon as that spoon takes off off the bottom or as it's fluttering back down to the bottom. Um, so on this, I like to use an eight foot rod. Uh, that way I can lift the rod high, it gets the spoon up off the bottom. And then uh, I can pick up line real fast if I get bit on the way back down. And the line I throw this on, I, th I like to throw it on braid if I'm making these long casts. Because when this spoon starts to fall and a fish eats it, you can feel it. I mean, you've got direct contact with braid. There's absolutely no stretch. And the braid I throw it on is a Daiwa Samurai braid. It's 50 pound test and it's a really small, really smooth uh, diameter braid. And uh, the reel I put it on is a Daiwa Zillion. It's a seven to one reel, uh, a really fast uh, geared reel. That way I can pick up a lot of line if I do get bit on that fall or my rod tip's high. The colors on these big spoons, I mean, they're pretty basic. We're, we're just trying to imitate a big bait fish, a shad. Uh, so they make a big silver spoon, which is my favorite. And then the other one I like to use is called a bar fish. It's got a little bit of a chartreuse back, kind of a red throat to it, and the rest of it's silver. Uh, the other thing I do when I get this out of the package is it doesn't come with a swivel. So I put a, a fairly good sized barrel swivel in the front of this thing. So that way when I pull it and the, the spoon starts to spin, it doesn't, it doesn't knock my line up as bad. Um, the second thing I do is I always change a hook. The hook is uh, a, it's a one aught it's a owner stinger ST36. It's a super sharp hook. And the reason you need this super sharp hook is, you know, you're so far out there when the fish eats it, you want to pick up line. You want to make sure those hooks get buried in that fish. Um, as far as fighting a fish on this thing, I mean, I got 50 pound braid, no stretch line. If I get a good hook in it, you know, you just don't want to stop winding. You just want to, I mean, if the fish comes to the surface, water ski it to the boat. If it stays under the surface, just crank as hard as you can. Get it to the boat as fast as possible. That keeps that fish from uh, shaking its head and throwing this big old, it's a, big oversized spoon so when that thing starts to shake inside of his face it's got a chance of those hooks coming out so when you when you get hooked up with one of these things you just want to crank as hard as you can to the boat so summertime pattern big spoons river channels and try to target them schooling fish uh, next time you're out on the water grab one of these things start jerking it off the bottom see if you can't get hooked up um, I'm Randy McAbee, Tackle Warehouse Pro. You guys have a good time and see you on the water.